Hey, what's up, guys? The ranked sixth player in the world has used this log bait deck to barrel his way to the top leaderboard by surrounding professional players with goblins. By removing the big spell and log bait, you have a lot more little swarm cards to play with and overwhelm opponents. Specifically, by splitting up wall breakers in the middle to force out elixir on both sides and stacking up princesses in the back that the opponent can never target. Because if opponents net negative elixir traits against wall breakers with buildings every time, they are forced to use small spells to remove the goblin barrel and the goblin gangs that are planted at the river, they're gonna have nothing to clean up the princess. So she'll be left there protected by your evolved knights and rascals giving you endless value. And when you're up elixir with this deck gaining momentum, it is non-stop spam. And when your opponent's in a weak state and you're ceaselessly spamming, seven out of the eight cards in the deck have game-winning potential. Let's barrel into some games, bait out all the logs, and punish opponents at every opportunity to assert maximum dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's supporting the channel with critical code SIRTAG. Hey, what's up, Danger? What's going on, my dude? You're going to be in a dangerous position if you allocate your spells one time in the wrong way. So I'm going to knight in the back first play, and he's going to go Barbarians. Generally, when we see barbs, we're going to be playing against either a Lava Hound deck or a Fireball Bait deck. So idealistically, we can go for a Goblin Barrel right now, and then I'm pretty sure that the Prince is going to be able to prioritize the Barbarians on the left, and we won't have to spend that much Elixir there. We can just go in for a Goblin Gang and shut down the Barbarians. So what is he going to do? I mean, the Prince is going to be able to kill the barbs on the right too. I just wasn't even expecting that. Okay, 1 million percent a Lava Hound deck. If we're able to figure out a way to defend this princess for a long period of time because our opponent only has arrows, I don't know if he's even able to kill it. The barbs are out of cycle. The skeleton dragons are out of cycle. He doesn't have arrows in cycle. How is he going to kill this princess? This princess is a mad lad. I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that is the importance of protecting your princesses if you can. It will get your opponent antagonized, angry, and kind of in a desperate position where they're forced to use an Inferno Dragon to finish it off. So I need to go in for a Goblin Gang here, and it's obvious to me that we are going to have some problems if he decides the Eros. If he doesn't do that, then we can go for an Evolved Knight and completely counter everything. I'm going to drop my Evolved Knight way later, though, because I want to be able to pull the Barbarians directly into both towers and not take as much damage on my Precious Knight. So he's going to Lava Hound in the back. I think that's interesting because how are you going to kill the Evolved Knight? What's the counter to it? You don't have barbs in cycle, so it's just going to stay alive forever. When you're not targeting it or stopping it from moving, it racks up an insane amount of damage. When it's stagnant, like right now, because it's hitting the tower, it takes its full damage. But when it's moving, it's taking 60% less damage every time. So obviously, he's going to have profound problems in those type of situations. So he's giving us a well played. I think he's being sarcastic right now. This time, I think he's definitely being sarcastic because he knows he's going to do destructive damage on both sides. However, we don't have a building. So this is one of those matchups that is not easy for me. If we're playing against Golem or Lava Hound, those are the two matchups that we fear the most. So the princess is still going to stay alive. Wait, what if we go Rascals again? <laughs> I am such an incorrigible troll. This is how we like to play the game, though. It's just so much more fun to play like this. Be a certified savage. Never be average. Always go and spam your spam to the fullest extent. The princess will eventually die here, unfortunately, but she is going to be giving us positive extra traits all day long, so it doesn't even matter. We're going to go in for a Goblin Gang here on the right-hand side. He was expecting to, us to go for a Knight on the left, and he messed up. He ended up cycling his Inferno Dragon. So we're going to step... Uh, yeah, I think we can separate our stuff. Go in for a Knight here, so the Inferno Dragon will eventually die. And then we can still prioritize counter-pushing on both sides. So we want to keep our Elixir relatively low, so our opponent can't comfortably counter our stuff without dropping arrows. So yeah, he's going to have to Arrows here. I think we can go in for a Princess, and we can go Goblin Gang after he Arrows is. We've got two princesses on top of the... Uh, no, we've only got one of them. Ooh, this is really sketchy. But we've got a ton of stuff counter pushing. So let's go in for one of these. Let's go for a Knight, Wallbreaker's Goblin Barrel because he doesn't have arrows in cycles. So there's no way he defends us. GG, we win. <laughs> it's kind of funny but to put yourself in this situation where you know you're going to win. Oh, wait, he's going to freeze. Is he just delaying the inevitable though? Yeah, I don't think he can counter the Evolved Knight. Wow, he uh, froze the movie, he put it on pause, but he still ended up with a loss. And I'm genuinely surprised that he had Freeze in a Lava Hound Balloon deck. I thought for sure the last card would be like Lightning or Zap. Even in a typically dangerous matchup for us, this Log Bait deck comes out on top. Well, we plan on going up non-stop, starting at 5,400 in the world. Hey, my man has a Mega Knight in the banner, and he's also got the thinking emote. So if he's really, truly thinking, he probably wouldn't run a Mega Knight deck because it requires very limited brain capacity. Okay. I think it was sarcastic because the guy is running a recruits deck and he spams it in the back. The lowest skill start that you could possibly do in Clash Royale out of the ones that make sense. It is a very good play, yet it is incredibly easy to master. Cycling recruits in the back and spamming the evolution. So I'm going to go wall breakers to kite one of the recruits backwards so we don't take the full brunt of the damage. But obviously not looking great for us. 
We're in a pretty bad spot, and our opponent could add to the injury by going in for arrows. And of course he does. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go Goblin Gang on top of this, and maybe we can activate King Tower and feel a little bit better about ourselves. But at the same time, dang, dude. Firecracker hitting me in the face. Oh, I'm in such a bad spot. I, I feel the Q8 force. I don't even know what that means, but I feel it. It is not feeling good. So I definitely do want to apply pressure here since we are going to be down a lot. I'm going to go in for Wallbreaker's counter with a log. That should fully counter it. Wait, does he have nothing? Oh, he's got Meganite. He really does. <laughs> I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a freaking joke. And I wish it was a joke because this is going to make me choke. There's no way. There's no way I stop this. I mean, we can go in for, like, Goblin Gang in the middle and somehow salvage the tower at, like, 2 HP, maybe? Okay. 180. Slightly more than 2 health. We'll take that. It's something. Maybe we can work with this. It's not looking good, but our deck is extremely destructive, so there is potential for comebacks at all points in turn. So, I'm going to go in for a Wallbreakers here. We're probably forced something out. Ooh. Well, I, I think that those connect, so that's great. I'm surprised that he let that happen, but I shouldn't be because he's running Mega Knight with Recruits. But also, those are really defensive cards. So, I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, we're going to go for Rascals in the middle. And we're prioritized defending the low HP tower, which might be a foolish endeavor, but it is what it is. I could go for the Evolved Knight right now. I don't necessarily want to right now because I think that would just be a little bit more Elixir than I need to. And I can go in for a Goblin Barrel here on the right-hand side. And then possibly the Dark Goblin is going to take the tower off on the left. And he's going to Magnite in the right. Yes, that's exactly what we wanted. Let's freaking go. You already know we can Princess here as well. And then we can go for Rascals on top of the aggressive skeleton barrel and if he arrows is he will take the tower eventually just not with that so we're going to try to go in for a knight in the middle to pull the mega knight and then we're able to counter with the rest of our bait cards and then we can flow through with wallbreakers goblin barrel goblin gang yeah i'm gonna do it screw it let's just spam everything we have and hope it works genuinely this is the strategy because he doesn't have any small spells in his deck so i can guarantee that the goblins are going to connect to the tower that is so much damage oh my gosh guys all i need to do is go for a goblin barrel with something in the middle and i win so I can sack the tower on the right. We know that he's going to take it, right? Yeah, he's going to take it. So I'm not going to try to defend it. He's going to let it go. He's going to arrows. Yep, exactly as we expect. Because we forced the arrows by just the threat of going in for something on defense. He had to arrows to guarantee that he took the tower. But if he arrows this, then he can't stop the goblin barrel. So our mind games of saving elixir screwed him over. The prediction for maximum speed and efficiency against Mega Knight slapped him out of the game. Hey, we got to give me this Lewis. What's up, man? He's from the Tilted Clan, and we're ready to tilt him to a different dimension. I'm going to go for Wallbreaker's first play just because we want to force out Elixir on both sides. That, interestingly enough, does not counter the Wallbreakers. One of them will always connect into that little prince. I'm also go for a Dark Goblin here. I want to be able to snipe that Little Prince and force that extra Elixir. Notice how the Little Prince's range is slightly lower than the Dark Goblin, and it takes three shots to kill the Dark Goblin. So if you guys are unaware, Dark Goblin gives you a phenomenal interaction against the Little Prince, being able to snipe it for an even Elixir trade, while also being able to give you counter push and get damage on the tower. It's one of my favorite things to do because obviously when you play against a lot of Little Princes for many months, you're going to find every feasible way of countering the card, and that is right up there as one of the best ones, along with Minions. Minions and Dark Goblin are my two premier answers to counter the Little Prince. I'm going to go for a Goblin Barrel here because we have Spear Goblins flowing at our opponent. I think he's going to have to drop some small spells. Oh, or big spells too. That's fine. I, I, you know, I'm very happy with that. If we can force out a Fireball and a Zap with a Mini P.E.K.K.A., it's obvious to me that you're running a Sparky deck. So I want to go for Rascals here and then just apply more pressure. How are you going to defend this if you don't have much Elixir? Oh, you're going to have Barbarians back. Uh, I guess we can log those to finish them off maybe with a Dark Goblin. I think overall that was our best transaction that we could have had. But I might be forced to go in for Princess, or I could go Wallbreakers again. I'm going to go Wallbreakers. Make sure I don't take any damage on my tower whatsoever from those Barbarians. They're looking mad menacing. Dude, he is just eating that damage like a snack. We can go for a Knight a little bit lower in case he wants to click the ability. I don't want the Little Prince to lock on my tower, so I wait the last possible second where I see if he clicks the ability. I think it would be foolish. He's probably not going to do it. So we can go for Princess here. We can also go for a Dark Goblin to start sniping on top of that mini pack, and that's fine as well. Just starting our work a little bit early. We never procrastinate with the Dark Goblin, as you guys can see, against Little Prince and the mini P.E.K.K.A. So he's going to Arrows. Ooh, wow. All right. Hmm. Arrows Zap Fireball. That makes me think that it might buy something a little bit different than a Sparky deck. I don't know. Oh, it's Golem. Golem with Fireball? What the heck? Dude, what are you doing? So I can't go for a Goblin Barrel because he's going to defend whatever he defends the Princess with with the Goblin Barrel at the same time. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to eventually. All right, cool. I'm glad that I timed it in accordance because otherwise the Princess shot would have not hit the Barbarians and that little bit of damage will matter to us. I'm going to go for a Dark Goblin here. Fortunately, we are able to go and lock onto the Princess and then we can go for Rascals in the middle after he arrows us, hopefully. Ooh, not perfect. 
It's still decent. We can go for Goblin Gang here on top of most of his spam. And then we can probably get away with the Knight as well. We just want the Spear Goblins to finish off the rest of his little bats. If the bats die, then I think I'm going to be okay. I don't know if that's how it's going to work today, but that's what I'm hoping for. We can also go for Wall Breakers to go and kite the Mini P.E.K.K.A. possibly. We'll see if that works out. Ooh, no, this Rascal. This Rascal needs to kill everything immediately. He's going to arrow me. Dude, stop it. Oh, you scoundrel. All right, we're going to try to go in for Princess. Nah, it's not going to work. Oh my gosh, how am I supposed to win this? I got to go Princess, go Goblin Barrel. The Rascals are on the tower, but he's just going to Golem at the river, right? Wait, the Rascals are on the tower on the right. Oh my gosh, dude, no way. Okay, okay, okay. We just need to cycle. We just need to cycle. Please tell me I win this. Please, no way. I cannot believe you had Arrow Zap Fireball with Golem and win by like 93 HP. That is definitely one of the hardest counters we could have played against. But if I had allocated my Goblin Barrel on the right-hand side, knowing that he was going to eat all that Rascal damage, I would have won the match. Ridiculously close stuff into a complete hard counter. You can't win every match you play, especially with an all-out aggressive deck like ours. We'll barrel onto the next one and bounce back there. Hey, this guy's got a P.E.K.K.A. banner and he's deep in the abyss. Well, if you are truly deep in the abyss, you'll pull out a P.E.K.K.A. from the darkness. Which, you'll plummet directly back into the darkness after you realize what you're playing against when you just match in a bait and you're constantly getting distracted and shredded. Obviously, this would be one of my favorite matchups that we could play into just because it's so fun to kite the P.E.K.K.A. around the map. But I don't even know if this is going to be a regular P.E.K.K.A. deck because we see Tornado. It could be like P.E.K.K.A. Executioner with some other splash damage. Oh, are the Wall Breakers going to be able to sporadically break through? Yes! Let's go! <laughs> So, obviously, if you guys are unaware, you want to drop your units directly on top of the wall breakers so the projectile of your ranged unit travels as fast as possible so it can immediately go and target the wall breakers. That's why he decided to do that. If you drop your zappies really far away, it's going to take longer for the zappies or whatever range card that you have to go and hit the wall breakers. But, in proxy, by doing that, by going and dropping your wall breakers really close, they're then susceptible to the explosion damage from the wall breakers. So, what comes around goes around, and this guy took the high risk, high reward strategy, and it did not reward him. So I'm going to try to go in for a Goblin Gang here, and maybe we're going to be able to log that off. Nice. I don't know if you guys noticed what happened there, but we logged the Little Prince off of our Dark Goblin, so our Dark Goblin would stay alive a little bit longer. Super important stuff to go and prioritize our offensive pushes, and if we hadn't pulled that off successfully, we would have been in a very bad spot. So I'm going to go in for a Princess here. I can finish off the Zappy on the right first, I believe, and then we can start targeting the Zappy on the left. Idealistically, we can bait out something with a Goblin Barrel that will also not counter the Princess. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to spam on the right-hand side. The princess will die to whatever he drops here. And then I think we can go in for... Ooh! Wow, he tried to get fancy with the connection on the King Tower. We're not going to give it to him. <laughs> so he's going to force the poison. Yeah, yeah. I figured something like that would happen. I knew he was going to drop a small spell if we were adamant on protecting our Princess. Always going opposite lane of where our opponent's trying to defend is ideal. So we can go Goblin Gang here, we can go Knight, and then we can go in for our Goblin Barrel. Reason why we're playing like this is if we spam stuff so often on the same side, we're just going to lose to the Little Prince and also whatever evolution he's got. So we're trying to make sure that he has to respond on both sides simultaneously and split up his Elixir. Or drop his Elixir like that, which is going to die to a Princess plus Log, and give us phenomenal Elixir trades. And then, because his elixir is limited, he's not able to really support and get the most out of the evolved archers. Instead, he's going to go in for a phoenix in the back. Oh, he really is running P.E.K.K.A. Wow, this is great. I think that the... Oh my gosh! Those mischievous rascals! They have a mind of their own. And I hope our opponent doesn't mind us taking his tower here. We got the princess locked into the tower, we got the goblins, and then we got the wall breakers. There's way too much for him to deal with, and he's just like, screw it, I'm not even going to try to defend. <laughs> Honestly, I relate to this P.E.K.K.A. player on a spiritual level. When you look at that immense amount of spam and you have cycled a 7 Elixir card in the back, you're just like, oops, probably shouldn't have done that because there's no way you can defend. Bait cards when you don't have the proper spells to deal with them get immense positive Elixir trades, so they're just steamrolling like a boulder going down a hill, and if you don't have enough strength to stop it, you're going to get steamrolled. Which might be the entire reason the P.E.K.K.A. player did that, because he just wants to get liked by the mini P.E.K.K.A. more. Hey, we got another one! We got the Pancake Banner! It's hilarious how we flatten the dude like a pancake, and then... You know, it goes full circle and gives us a pancake player. So, I'm ready to go for a princess in the back, and I want to make more pancakes today. We are ready to cook today with a bait. So, I think that this is going to be a scrumptious tower right now if our opponent's not going to end up having a log in their deck. So, it's worth testing and seeing what he's going to do. Okay, he's going to have log in the deck, unfortunately. So, maybe the princess can hit the tower. Yo, it does! I don't know if you guys saw that, but it locked on the ice golem hitting the tower too. And then we can log on the princess. The cool thing about our deck is we know that we can use our log, yet our opponent can't. 
So it's unfortunate, you know? The opponent has to just sit there wishing they could log our princess, wishing they could finish it off, but they never can. How is that princess still alive? How is this princess not targeting our princess? What is happening in this game? This legitimately, fundamentally does not make sense. How long has that thing stayed alive on the map? This is utterly shameless, princess. You're monopolizing the match and becoming the MVP before the game even starts. Doesn't even make sense. She's built different. <laughs> That's crazy. Wait, we're gonna slaughter his princess as well? Oh my gosh, wait, we're in such a good spot. Our princess is gonna be able to kill his. Aw, oh, if only. Anyway. This is one of the worst matchups for our deck because we don't have a good answer to the Hog Rider. So I need to have good starts if I'm going to win this one. I would say that Log is going to be very, very good against us. Obviously, he'll start pre-logging us as the game goes on longer. So that is slightly scary. I do want to go Wall Breaker so I can kite some of the bats the other side, ideally. And then I won't have to deal with them as much. Ooh, I still do. I guess we're going to go Goblin Gang. I don't like this. I actually am not an enjoyer of this interaction. Okay, we're gonna get an Ice Golem out of our opponent. He doesn't have Log and Cycle, so I think I can go for a Goblin Barrel and just try to collect our free damage for right now. And then I can use Rascals on defense if he goes in for a Hog Rider. So unfortunately, we don't have Rocket, so we don't have a way of immediately taking the tower. So that is the worst thing about our matchup here. If they go in for a Princess, I don't really want to go Rascals because they're just gonna die to Log. So I bet you he's gonna go for a Hog Rider. So we're gonna try to go for a Dark Goblin on the other side. Maybe they pre-log. We'll have to wait and see if that's going to be the case. We can go for wall breakers here. And then we can also go in for some other stuff afterward. We're trying to do dual lane pressure as much as possible. If one of the wall breakers can connect, that would be huge. We're going to log the princess. We're going to guarantee that we can go and win against that princess. And then we're going to go for a goblin bro in front. Go for princess here. Log is out of cycle. So then we can counter the hog rider with a knight and goblin gang. I don't know if that gets a hit on my tower. I hope it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Very clean stuff for us. We can log in the princess as per usual. That is the best thing for us in this matchup. I think one of the wall breakers connects, and that should... No, it doesn't. Dang, that's crazy. Log comes down, so now they have no log for our rascals. Ooh, that's not even an evolved knight for us, but it felt like it. All right, we're going to log here, and we're going to go in for a princess on top of the bats. The bats are a problem, but it's fine because we got two princesses on the map. I think they eventually have to log the princesses. I think that they can't hit the princesses unless they log, so that's going to be our winning interaction. Or at least that's what I'm hoping for right now. We can also go in for Rascals here aggressively and then protect our princess and then log on their princess. Dude, there's no way that a princess is in a freaking win condition right now. There's no universe. She's so strong. She's broken out of her mind. This is crazy. This is actually ludicrous. They have to log so then they can't log on top of the Goblin Barrel. And they had to log on the Hog Rider too to protect the Hog Rider. There are way too many log targets. And now the Goblin Gang on the right hand side is definitely going to steal the game if the Goblin Barrel does it. So we flattened another opponent to the pancake and we stole all the pancakes in the banner too. Even if you don't have phenomenal answers to your opponent's win condition, as long as you apply enough aggression throughout the match, they're never able to go in for successful hog riders. And if you bait out the log by stacking up princesses and going in for goblin barrels, you're never gonna be able to log on the goblin gangs and rascals, securing you a solid defense. Roll the like button if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.